Hello everybody. Chief of the Cards here and we are going to look at monster uh, decks in Gwent. And um, a couple different things. So uh, on the monster decks I've unlocked all the cards except for two cards. One a five cost uh, Frightener and the other a um, uh, heavy Arachnid. And that's it. Other than that I have all of the cards. So let's start by looking at the monster deck. Let's look at it in terms of their leader abilities. And as you know in Gwent all the leaders are, uh, are well, most of the leaders are just one person. Aridin, in this case, of course, leader of the Wild Hunt. If you haven't played Witcher 3, I highly suggest you do so. It's an amazing game. Um, but the first one is pick any weather card from your deck and play it instantly. Uh, the second one is double the strength of all your close combat units, unless Commander's Horn is present. The next one is discard two cards and draw one card. Uh, the next one, bringer of death, restore card from your discard pile to your hand. And the last one is uh, doubles the strength of all spy cards. So uh, solid abilities on each one. Um, this one is pretty fun if uh, you're playing against my user spies, but it's so situational that um, you know you probably won't use this too much. Uh, Bringer of Death is a great one. This is a, a way to manipulate the battlefield. So. Uh, you can go ahead and bring cards back, and then it adds, basically adds as a way to draw a card, really, because you're playing a previously card, and it goes to your hand. So it it, it draws out a turn in case you're looking to uh, prolong the game. It also gives you back a good card that you played previously. Um, this card could be pretty good if you just had a really bad hand, um, and you... Um, you know, you just have a bad hand. Really, is like the way to say it. It's, it's not a great card, uh, not a great ability. Um, right now, leader in the clubhouse is bringer of death. Next one, double strength by close combat units. This is an amazing one. This is a great one. Um, if you're gonna play this one, you probably don't need to double stack it with uh, dandelion, which is a melee card that that bolsters your your close combat units. Uh, so you could take him out and maybe put more commander's horns in. But he's a good way to pump up because a lot of the uh, muster abilities, um, which is which is um, if you play a monster with a muster, it'll summon summon all other monsters into play. So a lot of them have are close combat units like your crones, um, pretty much all of them. Uh, so this would be a great synergy with them. And then the last one is pick any weather card from your deck and play it instantly. This would be really good also if um, you want to just have a clear weather condition where you're mustering on the front row they play biting frost so you can counter it with that so there are three one two and three really good leader abilities to, to choose a deck from um, it really comes down to you want to manipulate the battlefield and get constant pressure do you want to go for a big rush or do you want to try to control the battlefield so <laughs> really interesting builds for the leader decks I'm gonna go with commander of the red riders as double strength of all close combat so we're gonna go for just a big hit and doing that what you wanna do is you want to um, go in and you wanna take out your dandelion just free some uh, space there's only one um, and you wanna go to your weather cards special cards uh, you wanna put in um, well, you want to kind of get rid of uh, the rain and the snow. What you're doing here is you're going to go for a high pump up. You're going to go for commander's horns to pump up your other rows and clear weathers to stop them from um, frosting you. So you have decoys, commander's horns, three scorches, uh, two clear weathers. A really good build for this particular all-in variant. Although really, um, if you wanted to, you could put other weathers in or another decoy in for the commander's horn. It's up to you how you want to play it. Um, this is much more of a uh, going all in. Uh, you have a lot of close combat units in this in this deck. So what you're looking at, of course, is all the legendaries. Uh, you have to have uh, the Lemetrimurth. I hope I said that right. <laughs> That's hard to say. Uh, he's a good scorch card. Um, he is a really good synergy with the other. Um, for the Metromarth, if you synergize with uh, Bringer of Death, you could use him as a Scorch. 
in two turns. So he's a very good synergize with Aaron and Bringer of Death. But we're going to stay with Commander Red Riders for now. Still a good card either way. Plus you can double him up and make him a 14. That's good. Uh, if you're going to if you're going to go with this, then you're going to want to have uh, a lot of big uh, infantry units in there. I have a lot of hero units there. There's the muster, the first muster. It's the crones. They bring in all of the. Um, you summon one crone, they bring in three. Um, and that's 18 damage right there. And when you do that, it, it buffs up pretty well. Uh, vampires, I have um, uh, all, all the vampires, all five of them. So when one comes in, they all come in. And I have three Arrakis. Um, I'm missing the big Arrakis, the big, the big daddy Arrakis. So uh, you see a lot of muster. All my infantry can muster. I have the fiend in there because it's just a big creature um, that is pretty beefy. Now, if you want to, you can kind of go a little heavier with this build, and you can kind of put maybe a, the fork tail in, the plague maiden, um, werewolf, all the fives to double them up. And you could take the hero units out because they can't be. Um, doubled so but they're already tens so you, you don't necessarily have to uh, put them in so then you look at what else you have in the deck at range because you have um, um, some interesting commander's horns you want to put some range in there unfortunately um, the range put a grave hag in the range there's not a lot of range in this deck um, the gaunter odim he will bring some range in there, which really helps. The Toad is an amazing card. This is from the um, Blood and, um, Hearts of Stone expansion. So you have these that just got added to range for the monsters, so that the Commander's Horn could pump them up. And then your Commander of the Red Riders would then pump up your um, infantry, or your close combat. So you put a Grave Hag in. Um, Karen can pump up either one, which is nice. A little synergy there. Um... I have um, some an earth and a fire elemental. I thought I had an ice elemental as well. Let's see. Yeah, I did ice giant. So you can put a little more um, range in there. Earth, fire, and ice. Uh, pretty nice. And so that's the deck. You're basically looking to, um, to muster and then double up and double down on some strength. Uh, and again, this also works um, with the Bringer of Death um, heroic ability. So you can use you have some big hitters in there, you can bring them back. So we're going to, um, and right now, there's 43 cards in the deck. There is no maximum card, so I can put them all in there and uh, work with it. So let's take a look at this deck in action. Um, and I give this credit to um, uh, my son, who actually came up with the idea of how to use the uh, special cards in a synergistic way, to where it's just focused on clearing out any negative effects and pumping up your creatures. Um, so I call this the um, the Tony Red Rider deck. So let's start it up, see what we can do here. We don't want to use the Commander Horn on our first row unless we have two. So two scorches might be a little much. You always want to look at your your hand, and you want to make sure you don't have multiple copies, like. So, example, I have two hags. Well, I don't need two crones because one summons the other. I don't need two vampires, um, so I can throw one back. Now, that is not a great hand <laughs> unless he has spies. If he throws some spies down, I can bring them back to my hand. Uh, he doesn't. He has a one-cost card, which is not very terrifying. Uh, so we are set up for a um, removal fest, which is, which is not good. Not good. Not a good draw. This is where that Aridin card where you can discard two and draw one would come into play. I could drop these two and then draw one. But we'll play what we have. Throw some vampires out. Uh, and there they go. They muster all five, which is a nice and handy ability. He will play a frost if he has it. Um, he obviously doesn't, which is nice. Now, this is, we have two Scorches. Might as well make use of it. And what Scorch does is it destroys the highest uh, minion on the field, the highest cost. That includes yours. If you want to play it strategically, it's an 8. Nothing is close to that on the field. But if I had an 8 on my side and I hit his, it would also kill mine. Once again, I have two Scorches. Uh, I might as well use them um, and take out his people as he goes. Now, you don't necessarily want to do this early on, but like I said, I'm uh, 
well, I have no choice. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. We have, if you look at our hand, we have a lot of a lot of power on the board. Um, I think what I'm going to do is set up for next turn. Uh, make use of my um, decoys. I don't need all that much damage on the board here. Bring a five back to my hand. It it allows me to use a turn. Let him draw a card. So he has five. Um, not too worried about him, honestly, at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my hero heroic ability here. Just pump him up. Put this first round out of reach and still having heroics in my hand for the next round with a muster so I'm still way ahead I'm two cards ahead if you look at the seven and five uh, for the next two rounds so that was a very easy call to win that round and that's what I love about this game it's very strategic you can make the right calls you can um, put yourself in the best position to win so uh, now we go to this turn I keep four on the board so I'm up with the monster ability um, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw out the crones and get the get some pressure on the board um, I love the must. I love the monster deck. It's just real. It's a lot of pressure, a lot of damage right out the front. I pretty much won it at this point. Uh, there's really not much I need to do. I'm gonna throw um, Emlareth out there. I'm up 32 to five. This guy really doesn't have anything that can compete with that. I think. I think I'm still in the early zone. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna pass here. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna end up winning it, but. If I did, that way, the last turn, I would have uh, 22, 27 points in hand. I didn't get to play a lot of good things here because I didn't. I had a weird hand. So I played it as, as good as I could. As I could but I uh, overwhelmed this deck. This guy has ones. So I might want to go to Skellige and get some better opponents here to challenge the deck. But, um... To me. To me. Let's hope maybe he had a card that I hadn't had yet. No, he did so, let's look at it again. Maybe we can get a little better look at the monster deck. Um, what can I do with you for? In here. And let's see. Wanted to play cards. It's nice to make some uh, money, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just taking people's money right and left. Okay, so, um, some of the good monster cards in here. If we go over here to the infantry. Um, and of course, Geralt, Siri, Triss. That's you know just heroics. That's a hero cards you can use in any deck. But monster specific cards, um, you have uh, Draug, uh, Emerlith, just really big, beefy guys. Karen, um, it's a great uh, card that can be used like a Soyatel card, and kind of have agility goes back and forth on the front row or the medium range. So a really nice monster card. Um, sticking with the heroic, the hero cards first. Uh, range. Um, now Yennefer can be used in any deck, but Leshen, a really nice range, 10 um, damage range. And uh, there's Karen again, he can be used in both. Um, so it's really nice legendaries for the monsters in the, the uh, Witcher 3. And then of course uh, Villamouth can be used in each one. Svesimir Zoltan can be used in each one. Mysterious Elf. Uh, now we get to monster specific. The Fiend, a really good 6 damage card they can be pumped up so a pretty nice card and then of course the crones if you remember from the story just creepy 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 things but they can um, muster and there's three of them and they're really very good there's five vampires uh, one up here and then I got four down here they all muster and there's four um, Arrakis, Arrakis. Uh, there's three and then there's a, a, a um, uh, nice uh, a, a bigger one, a five one, I don't have. Uh, it's one of the two cards I don't have. And then on the cards I don't use in my deck, um, you have, of course, all the cool thing about this is you fought. If you played The Witcher, you fought all these things in the game, which is pretty neat. Fork Tail, Plague Maiden, the Griffin, the Werewolf, the Botchling. Unfortunately, we fought that. That was a, a really cool story, but ugh, gross. Um, harpy, different kind of harpy, a uh, foglet, which are really annoying to fight in the game to me anyway. The old neckers, of course, they muster, but I don't have them in my deck because they're two strength. So uh, no, uh, ghouls also muster. I have three of them, but I'm not going to use them as they're one strength. And just, just no. Um, 
uh, range. You have the Andrega, the Harpy, the Cockatrice, the Gargoyle, and another Harpy. Because Harpies can use on either row. So Harpies could actually be used in synergy here. Um, but they're only two strengths, so I'm, I'm going to pass on that. And then the, uh, the Siege Combat... Um, well, there's this this toad is ridiculous. Uh, this toad is fa just a fantastic addition to the monster deck um, with the scorch on the mid range. It's just so good, and you pair that with Villametroth on the front, and you have a scorch for each row. Um, so you have a front row scorch and you have a back row scorch, much like the Soyatel, which have that uh, siege scorch on their card. So uh, really interesting. The Grave Hag, uh, Kaden Leshen, uh, Gontro Dim joined from Hearts of Stone and of course everybody knows who he is if you played the expansion. If you haven't played the expansion I highly suggest doing so. It was phenomenal. It was really phenomenal. Uh, so we're going to play again try to get a better look at the monster deck in action. We don't have such a weird draw. Um, and of course we're going to overwhelm who we, who we play. Now again we look through our hand. We don't need two uh, Gontro Dims. There's a little range. That's good. Um, we have two vampires, don't need that. So we got some, we got a good hand. We got a couple of musters, we got the vampire muster, we got the arachnid muster, and the, and the uh, odim musters, but we don't have a um, way to pump them up. So, uh, or the mid-range anyway. So we're going to go ahead and start with something basic. We're going to just play a um, the grave hag. We don't really want to reveal too much what we have in our hand. We want to save that for later. Now we're going to go ahead and use this Scorch here. Um, as he has a 6 and we have a 5. So we're just going to take a little preemptive strike at him. He's going range. So we'll summon a little range action too. And if you don't have the um, Hearts of Stone expansion, you don't have the Gontro Dim and the Toad, um, it's 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 worth getting. But you don't need it. You can get it. You can be you're fine either way. Now, this is an interesting point right here. I am nine points up. Um, that's not a lot if I was playing a good deck, but this guy I don't think has any good cards. I'm just gonna put Zoltan Shivy out there <clears throat> and see. Uh, just kind of keep ahead. Yeah, and considering he's playing those low-cost minions, I don't need to go too much effort into this, so I'm just going to pass. Let him try to work up and use cards to catch me on this first round, knowing that I have two musters and a whole bunch of arsenal for the next two rounds. So we'll see if he can put something together. That uh, When they do that, a spy. He's putting two spies on my side. Um, when they play a spy like that, that's another good case to use that other um, bringer of death variant for him, so you can get these spies back and play him on a turn. Um, so that's a, that's a kind of lends itself to that. He had me two spies. Um, I got too cocky, so he's showing. He's telling me, "Okay, watch this." Uh, I'm just gonna muster. See if he plays a snow here. Didn't. Well, I've got to win this one, so I'm going to go ahead and oh, go ahead and pump them up. Yeah, I don't think there's too much you can do with that. So we're up. Uh, we have a two card advantage going into the final frame, and we have a bunch of damage in our hand. The next video I'm going to do is going to be on the Soyatel. I have some pretty cool builds for the Soyatel. Um, so we'll look at that next. Uh, I think we're going to win this one. <laughs> I think we have a pretty nice little lead right now, 32 to 1. What I like about the vampires as well, a key thing, is let's say he's scorched right now. 
because there's one bigger vampire and same with the arachnus which is why I want um, the bigger arach arachnus if they were to scorch it they'd only get one of the four cards in this case one of the uh, vampires are gone but they would get one of these four the five would stay up they'd scorch the five the fours would stay on the board so it's like a protector of the muster so they're really key to having it honestly uh, you want to have that card the bigger card of the set of musters if that makes any sense so I ended up barely winning this one um, just gonna pass here. I'll sh I'll show you what I mean here in a second. It's kind of an important thing about mustering. Uh, one of the things you really need to know. <coughs> mustering is great with monsters, but one of the things is a lot of people fall in love with the monsters because they are so powerful with that muster ability. Wanted to play. But you want to really make sure that you understand when and where to muster. So let's look at it here. So, for example, all right, the first thing you look at are the crones. If you muster the crones, they're all sixes. So if he were to scorch and you had nothing else on the board, it would take out all three of them and leave you nothing on the board. Whereas the vampires, there's a five-cost vampire, Catacan, and the rest are four-costs. So if you played them and he scorched, he would only take out that five-cost, which would leave you with 16 points on the board. So it's not that big a deal. In other words, he protects the other ones. Catacan is the target, which leaves the other ones able to stay on the board. Same thing with the Arrakis. They're all fours. There's a five cost one, a heavy Arrakis, I think it is. And he will protect the other three. Uh, the crones have no protection. So once they get brought in, they get, they get crushed. What you want to try to do in that case is if you have the crones, you want to play them after um, Villametromoth, right? You want to make sure he is out there. He would then protect the crones. Uh, Triss would not because she doesn't count. She's a heroic card. So you, the only person that can protect him or, that, or them is Villametromoth. Uh, Villametromoth, excuse me. So not much in the way of protection for them. A fiend is not enough to protect them. It's the six. It would go away with them. Um, so, uh, kind of important. Uh, the key piece I need is that next spider. So, that's the key thing about musters. Um, the toad would also act as protection if it was on the board. So, um, but it has to be on the board. So, you need a toad or you need Vilmetromoth to protect the crones if you were to muster them. Alright, and of course, the elementals wouldn't help any protection. So that's a look at the monster deck in Gwent. Um, there are changes coming out when the game gets released in September. But it gives you kind of an idea of what the monster deck was before uh, the updates. Uh, really cool really cool deck built on mustering. So it's kind of muster heavy um, with the crones, the vampires, the ghouls, the neckers, um, all that stuff in there. Um, and you just had to know how to play it. So. So let's look at the Red Rider. Let's change it real quick. I'll show you the other one while we're waiting. Uh, Bringer of Death, where that's good. And this will be the last one of this video. Um, and you'll see the difference between the two. But you saw how important the must the the Red Rider was with pumping up the infantry. Wow, I'd, I'd love to get Scorch in my hand on it. Um, <laughs> all right, so we got one Vampire, which you call the rest, which is good. One Crone, two Crone, too many Crones. Ah, that's actually really good. If I... Uh, that's actually really good. I'll get rid of him. There we go. Alright, so we got Scorches. Scorches took me a long time to get in this game. I didn't have them for a very long time, so I'm excited to see them. Um, we're going to start off just very basic. If I have all these cards and I have musters, I like to play the musters late. Um, especially if I don't have a sun. If I had a if I had a clear weather, I may, you know, be more cavalier about it. But I'm gonna throw out Vesemir, and uh, you know, you don't want to show what you have. You don't need to show what you have. Not not like Hearthstone or other games like that where you can just go all out and you know play whatever top decks. You got to be kind of strategic on what you play. Um, now, because I put a Vesemir out, if I were to scorch that unit back there, it would also kill Vesemir. 
So my Scorch kind of got negated, which kind of stinks. So, um, I am going to just play Yennefer. But also my Vesemir is protected from his Scorch if he has one, because he knows it would also kill his. So we're kind of in a anti-scorch-free scorch, scorch -free zone. And we'll just play the other cards we have. And the reason why I played that Yennefer, by the way, is that if he does have a Biting Frost, I would still have 7 on the board. Um, so it kind of acts as a protection there. Um... Um, if I were to sc well, Scorch would take out two on people, which would be really bad. So I don't call it the Hags, because if he does have a Scorch, it it's basically destroys my whole side. Um, I'm up 1916. I don't have a really good position here. I'm just gonna play one of my big cards. I am going to play. I don't want to play my vampires here because that would leave me really nothing for the next round. I'm going to pass. Um, I'm at 29:20. He's uh, got to play at least two or three cards to pull pull this one out. Uh, there's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Now, this actually helps me. So he plays a spy. Two spies on my side. He's drawing cards. Which is nice. Um, and he's using them. Poorly. But he won the round. Okay, so now, this is where the ability of... My superstar ability works really well. Not only does it pass a turn... But, well, when it's my turn. I have a card advantage going into the final uh, final two sets, actually. So he's really in trouble. But I'm going to use my ability. And I'm not, he played two spies on me, so obviously I want to use the least amount of damage. Um, the one cost. He's already at a six card disadvantage going into the final two sets. I feel pretty good about myself. But I'm going to go ahead and spy on him anyway. Uh, it didn't really help me. I got two vampires or I had one in hand. So you could make the argument to play the vampire first and then spy. Um, I don't need to muster that much. Um, I can... Well, I've got to win this one. But I don't... I'll just go ahead and play Siri. Um, just win it real easy. And set up for the next turn. Uh, he has one card in his hand. I'm going to um, assume if it's Biting Frost, he still is going to lose. But I'm going to play my Vampire here. So that if he does Scorch it, he has Scorch in his hand. It's only going to take out the six and leave the rest of it on the board. He has a Rain, which doesn't really affect me too much. Uh, we're going to have a little fun. Pump it up here. More fun. So we're able to eke out a victory uh, here on that one. And that shows you the benefit of having uh, the ability to bring a card back from the graveyard. You're able to kind of manipulate, and if they play something or you lose something, you can then um, get it back. So this is uh, the end of the tutorial on the uh, monster deck to look at different versions of how super superhero ability or the superhero excuse Wanted me to play. The leader ability can affect your play style and how it changes the scope of battle. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be making more on each one of the factions. Uh, so uh, please stay tuned and I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have any questions please feel free to leave it at Shifu of the Cards at Twitter, or Shifu of the Cards at YouTube, Shifu of the Cards at Twitch. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a great day and hope you enjoyed it and learned something today. Thank you. Well, for those of you that